Hello friends, it's David Sparks here from the Max Sparky Field Guides and I'm so happy to share with you a free sample of the Siri Shortcut Field Guide. I'm a big fan of what Apple's done with Siri Shortcuts. I feel like everybody should be able to automate and with Siri Shortcuts you can. This video course has 40 videos with over 3 plus hours teaching you how to become a master at Siri Shortcuts. The Siri Shortcuts I build throughout these videos are all available as downloadable content attached to each video. Most importantly, it's made with much love. Everybody can use Siri shortcuts to get work done faster on their iPhones and iPads so they can get on with the things they love. I intend to add updates to this course so it's only going to get bigger over time. If you'd like a hand getting your iPhone and your iPad to dance for you, this is the course you want. So with that in mind, here are some free samples from the Siri shortcuts field guide. Hello, I'm David Sparks and welcome to the Siri Shortcuts Field Guide. I'm really excited about Siri Shortcuts because it's from Apple and it finally brings real power to automation on the iPhone and the iPad. This is an all video course, there's over three hours of videos and I will be able to update it with this new Learn.MacSparky system. But either way, I'm happy to be sharing it with you. But before we get started, first let's take a moment to look at the history of automation on iOS. In the beginning, we just had the iPhone, and with the original iPhone, none of us really expected much automation from it. It just didn't seem to be a device designed around it, and with the first two or three iPhones, it just seemed like Apple didn't care about that stuff. Automation was not a thing that they were interested in on the iPhone and later iPad. Then a few smart people started coming up with their own solutions. Greg Pierce over at Agile Tortoise of Drafts fame uh, was instrumental in creating the URL callback. That was a bit of clever programming that allowed applications to talk to each other. So let's say that Drafts wanted to get a definition. It could send a request to Terminology, say, hey, give me a definition, and using a URL callback, Terminology could send that back to Drafts. It was really great. It was kind of revolutionary for the time, but it wasn't that much. And the fact is developers have stretched the URL callback so far. They've got so much out of it that's impressive, but it wasn't enough. What we really wanted was like the Mac. You know, we wanted to have something like Automator, where we could stack together automations, uh, put things together without doing any programming and make our computers or our iPhones or our iPads automatically do things for us. But that just didn't exist. Then somebody made it. It's called Workflow. And Workflow is exactly what we were thinking about. It gave us Automator for the iPad and iPhone. And it was amazing. I was in the Workflow beta and it was one of those legendary betas where it went really long and a lot of us were wondering if they'd ever even be allowed to release an app this powerful on the iPad and iPhone. I was even trying to figure out ways to run the beta forever if Apple didn't approve it. But eventually Apple did approve it and we got automation for the iPad and iPhone and we love that. Everybody was using Workflow because it was awesome. I even made a course on it. But then one day we woke up and found out that Apple purchased Workflow, and nobody knew what that meant. Did that mean Apple was going to destroy it and wipe it out, or did that mean they were going to make it better? Well, with the release of iOS 12, we discovered that it got better. Apple has now released Siri Shortcuts, which is a successor to Workflow. It's got all that great stuff Workflow had and more. Because it's combined with the operating system, we can do things with Siri Shortcuts that we could have never dreamed of with Workflow. So people ask me, what is Siri Shortcuts? To me, Siri Shortcuts is a combination of workflow plus sharks with lasers on them. It's awesome. So now with Siri Shortcuts, we've got automation like we never had it before on the iPad and iPhone, and it's time for you to master it. It's time for you to learn Siri Shortcuts. Before digging in, I wanted to take just a few minutes to give an overview of this course. It's broken up into several sections. The first section is the introduction and overview, which you're watching right now. The next is a section on the Siri Shortcuts basics. There's a lot you can do with Siri Shortcuts without ever opening the Siri Shortcuts app. So I wanna make sure you understand how that works and how to take the best advantage of that. And there's a video on that. Next, we get into the Shortcuts app, and that's the third section. There's a bunch of 
things in here that I would call primers, kind of going through how Siri Shortcuts works, making your first shortcut and the interfaces. And I also go through several categories of automation that you may want to get good at, like your calendar or using the web or using the maps. Uh, there's several categories in here. Each one goes through the tools specific to that type of work. I feel like it's kind of a boot camp for Siri Shortcuts. After that, I start getting into more advanced topics like Siri programming tools with the if statements and variables and API calls. Uh, these things are what take you to the next level. Once you learn how to use these things, you can get a lot more out of Siri shortcuts. And then after that, I go through in detail some very useful shortcuts. I picked some of my favorites and I broke them down for you. I showed you how to build them and why I did each step as I built them. If you go through these, not only will you learn some great shortcuts, you also get some great knowledge about how to build your own. Now for all of these, I have downloadable content with the exact shortcut that you can download from iCloud so you can get them on your system and play along. And finally, in the conclusion, I tell you where I think this may all be going and share some additional resources so you can learn even more about shortcuts. And of course, at the end, I want to thank you for purchasing this course. In terms of mechanics, using the learn.mac Sparky site is pretty easy. Just pick a video that you want to watch and click on it. Then it's going to open that up in the main browser screen. There's a play button here you can press to start it. Below will be a short description, and if there's any downloadable content, it shows up there. For instance, I've got the tweet last photo shortcut here. If you click that on the Mac, it's going to give you an iCloud dialog. But if you click that on your iPhone or iPad, it's going to go straight into Siri shortcuts and download that shortcut for you. If you want to make adjustments with the way it plays, there's a gear right here where you can change the speed or the quality. You can also uh, change the volume with the volume slider. You can airplay it to your Apple TV and you can make it go full screen if you want. To resume play or pause, you've got a button right there. And here is a timer showing you the uh, exact time of the screencast. If you pull across, you can see it live scrubs for you. So if you want to get to a certain section, you can do that as well. So there's over three hours of videos in this course. There's lots of downloadable content. Why don't you dig in and have fun? Before getting into the Siri Shortcuts application, you need to understand that there's two different kinds of Siri Shortcuts. Apple's kind of legendary at this. For instance, they have a product called iCloud, except iCloud isn't just one product. It's a contact syncing. It's a cloud storage solution. It uh, takes care of your photos. They've got all these different things that hang under the cloud of iCloud. Well, they've done the same thing with Siri Shortcuts. There's the Siri Shortcuts application, which is the successor to workflow and it's going to be the subject of most of the screencasts but there's also these system shortcuts that they also call Siri shortcuts. Those system shortcuts are based on individual application actions. They get recommended by Siri and it depends on what you do on your device. For example if you set a lot of alarms for 6 a.m. eventually your iPhone and iPad are going to wise up to that and they're going to suggest to you through a Siri shortcut that you have an automatic tool to set an alarm. There's three places these show up. The first is in the settings application, right on your device. Just scroll down to Siri and search, and you'll see suggested shortcuts near the top of the list. And you can see for me, I've been in Apple News, so it wants me to see the stories from today, because quite often I go to this iPad in the evening and read the news. I sent a text message to Rosemary Orchard recently, so now it's suggesting I do that. And I've been jumping back and forth with workflow because I've been making the screencast. So it's got a suggestion that I do something in workflow. These are things that I've done frequently enough that Siri believes it should suggest them. Now there's more if I tap on the all shortcuts button. It's going to look at even more stuff that I've done recently. And I'm going to cover this in addition with the Siri shortcut application section of this video with web-based Siri shortcuts. But for now, you don't even need to open the Siri shortcuts app. You can just pick any one of these and kick it off from here. Better yet, you can open it with a plus sign and you can add a voice command to it. So if I want to edit my bedtime on a regular basis, I would just hit the red button 
edit bedtime. And now in order to edit the bedtime in my clock app, all I have to do is go to Siri and say edit bedtime and it does that for me. Let's do that. Edit bedtime. All right, so there it is, ready for me to set my bedtime. So going back to the Siri shortcuts, as in system shortcuts, this isn't gonna be the list you see on your iPad or iPhone. They're different for everybody because the device is always watching you. I know that sounds creepy, but it's not. It's watching you locally to determine what you do the most and tries to figure out how to help you the best. With the release of iOS 12, app developers are able to tie into this a couple ways. They've got the user activity API, which lets them tie simple tasks in their application to these voice commands, just like I showed you. And they can also use the Siri Kit API to do something more complex, where you can like pass an audio to a podcast app or run a shortcut in the background. It can actually get quite sophisticated. And best of all, like I said, you don't have to open the Siri shortcut app to make any of this happen. It's all just there. I think this is a gateway drug for people, for automation. Once you start seeing these show up and taking advantage of them, you're going to want to go deeper, and you can with Siri Shortcuts, the application. Now, you don't just see these buried in the system settings for Siri and Search. You can also see them in the search bar. So if I go to my home screen and pull down for the search bar, you can see I don't have any right now. It's not cooperating. These suggested shortcuts were showing up all day yesterday, and I've been waiting all day today to record this screencast, but it just doesn't want to give me any. But if you had one that it thought was appropriate for this moment, it would show up right here. So that's the second level. You've got the Siri uh, settings app, then you've got the search bar. And then sometimes during the beta process, I've even seen them show up at the unlock screen if it's something that Siri really thinks is urgent. Like for instance, if someone calls me and I don't take the call, and it's an important person to me. Like this has happened with both my wife and my sister where I declined the call and then later it gave me a suggestion to call them back. It's really gonna depend on how you use your device as to what suggestions you get. And best of all, this stuff just doesn't work as a system level Siri shortcut. These shortcuts that Siri comes up with can also be used in the shortcuts app. And I've got a whole screencast on that later, but just to show you really quick, I'm gonna go in the shortcuts app and I'm gonna tap on Siri suggestions. And you can see there's a whole bunch of them here that aren't normally available in Siri shortcuts. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but for instance, there is no edit bedtime command normally in Siri shortcuts, but because of these system level shortcuts, it's now available and I can add it to an automation routine. The hard part to understand about these Siri shortcuts is that they're not really repeatable. They come up based on your usage. If there's something you want to make show up in a Siri shortcut, do it several times on your phone or iPad, and that's the best way to get it to show up. But once you figure that out, you can kind of game the system and make these system level events show up so you can automate them with your voice or add them to a Siri shortcut automation. Either way, this is a really cool feature and you wanna make sure you understand it to get the most out of your iPhone and iPad. Okay, you've just downloaded Siri shortcuts. You've got a list of shortcuts here. Yours aren't gonna match mine because I've made a bunch of them. Before we do anything, let's create our first Siri shortcut together. You can create a new one by hitting the little plus button in the upper right corner and just follow along with me here. You may not understand everything, but I just wanna show you how easy this is. And uh, once you get through all this course, you're gonna be able to do all this stuff by yourself, but we're gonna do one together. Uh, so we've got a blank canvas here. Uh, what we're going to do is tweet the last photo we took. So we're going to type in photo under the search bar, and it's going to show you um, uh, the actions available to, and one of them has um, recent photos, get latest photos. So I'm just going to tap and hold on that and drag it up there. We're just going to get the most recent photo, and we will include screenshots or we won't. I'll turn that off. We're going to use photos, not screenshots. And then we're going to tweet it. So just type in tweet, and I've got TweetBot installed, but there's also the native Tweet application. I'll go ahead and uh, use the native application. So I'm gonna hold that up there and drag it. And now we've made a two-step automation here. Um, and so we'll do a few more things in the settings. I'm gonna tap on the 
upper right corner button there. We'll give it a name. We'll call it Tweet Last Photo. And we can give it an icon. We'll use a glyph with a camera. Ever notice how easy it is to find this stuff until you're on camera and shooting a screencast? Okay, click done. And we can, uh, we'll just leave it like that for now. I'm going to click done. And then I'm going to click done. And you can see there's the new uh, Siri shortcut there called Tweet Last Photo. If I just tap that, it's going to go into my photo library. I've been working on cleaning up my desk and I've got this cool foam. And then I'm going to add a tweet to it. And hit the tweet button. And off it goes to the internet. So we just created our first series shortcut and I used it. This is just a simple two step shortcut. You're gonna have some that are just two steps like this or even one step, but you're gonna have others that are 10 or 20 steps and do all sorts of magic on your iPhone. But before we got started, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make your own series shortcut in the series shortcuts app. Now let's get to work. Did you learn anything? I sure hope so. Those were just the basics. There's three more hours of content in the Siri Shortcuts field guide, and it gets into some really advanced stuff. Don't let that scare you though. Once you get through this course, you'll be a pro at it. So check out the Siri Shortcuts field guide. I'd really like to help you become awesome at this.